morning and welcome to Citizen Extra. And this morning we are standing by for the full judgment from the Supreme Court. You, of course, will remember that they have nullified President Uhuru Kenyatta's election. And today we expect to hear from the judges of the court their substantive reasons as to how they reached this conclusion on the illegalities and so-called irregularities that took place in the August general election. And we're standing by to give you live reaction from across the country, uh, news that will break as the court pronounced itself definitively uh, on that uh, judgment that they made. We have Francis Kashuri who will be standing by for us live from the law courts. We're also taking you live to Nyeri, Kisumu and Eldoret to bring your reactions on the same. And first, let's take you now to Gashuri standing by. Gashuri, what can we expect this morning and what is the atmosphere around the courts? Of course, yesterday we saw uh, that being the center of uh, protests uh, from Jubilee supporters. What is the mood like this morning? On the 1st of uh, September 2017, the Supreme Court judges told us they will give us detailed reasons as to how they arrived at the decision that they made on the 1st of September nullifying President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election. Uh, that was in the election that was conducted on the 8th of August 2017. And so the day is now finally here. And uh, what we expect to hear from the judges, uh, both the majority judges who uh, ruled in favor of the petition and the minority who, who, who ruled against the petition, is to give us detailed reasoning as to how they arrived at their respective decisions. And uh, you remember... In summary, uh, the four judges led by Chief Justice David Maraga, uh, Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilus, Dr. Smokin Wanjala, and Judge Isaac Lenaula told us that uh, the presidential election conducted on the 8th of August was marred with irregularities and illegalities. So basically what we expect to hear from them today in their comprehensive uh, judgment is what were these irregularities, how they were arrived at, and who is responsible for these irregularities. If there were illegalities, how, where, and when they were committed. So that, that's basically the detailed reasoning uh, or the judgment that you expect to hear from um, uh, the four judges who ruled in favor of the petition. And also we expect to hear from the two judges, that is uh, uh, Justice Jackton Boma Ojuang as well as Njo Kindongo, on the minority verdict. Uh, when they say that uh, they don't agree with their colleague judges in the Supreme Court, why don't they agree with them? They will comprehensively give us the reasons as to why they don't agree uh, with the grounds that were laid by the petitioner to seek the nullification of President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election. While the verdict is out, uh, while every Kenyan by now knows what was arrived at on the 1st uh, of September 2017, the question that the judges will be helping us to answer today is how they arrived at that judgment, uh, Anne. Um, and, and we'll return to that question of how they arrived at the judgment and substantively what we can hear from them, Gashuri. But before we get there, tell me a bit about the security situation at the court. Um, yesterday we saw protests there. Are we seeing a significant presence of police officers this morning? The slightly heavy uh, police presence around here, and uh, I've seen my colleague Hassan Mugambi is uh, out and about there. Uh, shortly I'll be handing over to him to tell us how the security situation is around the uh, precincts of court. But from where I'm standing, and I can tell you that there is increased check uh, police one, presence around the precincts of the uh, Supreme Court. Remember yesterday, this was the center of uh, attention uh, by Jubilee supporters who are here to uh, protest against what they say was a stolen victory uh, by the Supreme Court judges. And uh, so yesterday, the Chief Justice, together with the Judicial Service Commission, uh, directed their guns at uh, Inspector General of Police for failing to protect the specific judges and also for failing uh, to protect the uh, uh, judicial installations, such as the courtroom where we are now, that um, he is allowing uh, protesters to come, barricade uh, the precincts of court, and even uh, uh, interfere with the normal judicial operations. So for now... Uh, city hallway and uh, um, uh, the adjacent streets remain no go zone, especially for motorists. But uh, let me uh, hand over briefly to Hassan Mugambi to tell us how the security situation is uh, around the court uh, pressings. Hassan, to you. 
Well, thank you very much, Francis Gashuri, from inside the court premises here where we are expecting the uh, detailed ruling to be released today. As the situation here outside, as you have rightly put it, is that uh, we are seeing a section of uh, the city hall way uh, just uh, uh, blocked and barricaded by the police, um, you know, barricades here. Remember yesterday there was a bit of demonstrations here and um, uh, just to avoid that kind of uh, a, a demonstration, demonstration uh, to just uh, come and disrupt maybe the judges when they will be reading their detailed uh, analysis and uh, their detailed um, uh, judgment uh, they have actually uh, uh, restrained uh, movements here and uh, of course uh, contingent of po police officers are uh, drawing from uh, the general service unit of um, you know anti-riot police officers administration police officers they are all here just to ensure that uh, uh, no one crosses those barriers and no one uh, interrupts uh, the uh, proceedings as they will be uh, uh taken there by the uh, Supreme Court uh, judges here at the Supreme Court. So, uh, as you can see, a contingent of police officers there, the Green Berets, just uh, telling you that they have been drawn from different, uh, different, co uh, you know, contingents. Uh, th that is the forestry uh, department as, uh, as well as the regular police officers. They're all here, numbering about 200 of them. Uh, just um, to uh, ensure that it is uh, going to be a tranquil exercise. We will not see the kind of drama uh, we saw maybe yesterday. Uh, and then even if there is the kind of drama because uh, uh, of the constitutional rights of uh, demonstrators here in the country, it will be a contained kind of a demonstration. Jury. Thank you very much, Hassan Mugambi. Uh, Gashiri, um, thanks for that. Uh, tell us about uh, the political stakes going into this judgment. Obviously, um, while this is a, a legal matter, it has political implications, and both sides of the political divide will be looking to hear certain things. On one side, NASA uh, looking perhaps to cement its political leverage in this matter, that indeed these polls were badly flawed. And on the other hand, uh, Jubilee uh, looking to see whether the argument or the reasoning of the court will be strong enough to um, substantiate the kind of uh, dramatic outcome that came from the Supreme Court. Would you tell us a little bit about the political stakes uh, going into this uh, legal matter today? One of the most uh, awaited things uh, and this morning is to hear about the irregularities and the illegalities that were allegedly committed in the presidential election that was held on the 8th of August. Remember, NASA has been insisting, agitating, in fact demanding for electoral reforms before Kenyans can return to the ballot for the repeat presidential election. Actually, NASA leader specific, uh, Raila Odinga specifically saying that uh, NASA is not talking about boycotting uh, the repeat presidential election, but ensuring that the elections will not be conducted if the electoral reforms are not uh, effected uh, in the nine irreducible minimums uh, that uh, the coalition has outlined. And part of the uh, irreducible minimum is the uh, total overhaul of the IBC secretariat and exit of specific uh, secretariat uh, of officials, among them uh, Ezra Chiloba, as well as the ICT director, uh, uh, James Muhati, uh, director of electoral operations, the Immaculate Kasait, director of legal affairs, uh, Praxidis uh, Torre, among other officials. So we expect to hear uh, from this judgment on whether those specific officers uh, there will be any culpability leveled against them insofar as the conduct and the operations of the presidential election is, co is concerned. Um, we also await to hear whether there will be any specific blame that will be apportioned to the uh, IBC team uh, and especially in the question of a transmission of uh, presidential election results. Remember, at the heart uh, of the petition that was filed by NASA leader Raila Odinga were claims of discrepancies in the results, in the results, in the results that were declared at the polling stations and the, national, uh, the, and the constituency tallying centers vis-a-vis -vis what was uh, transmitted at the national tallying center. There were questions of um, non-gazetted polling stations. There were questions of um, uh, results that were uh, beamed uh, at the national tallying center, uh, what the IBC legal team was calling statistics. 
then there's all, also the question of um, the difference in terms of the number of people who turned up to vote for the president vis-a-vis -vis those who turned up to vote for other elective seats that were on offer, that the five of them that were on offer uh, on the August 8th the polls. So we expect to hear quite a number of issues. Remember, on the other hand, Jubilee has been insisting that um, unless NASA knows something that they don't know insofar as the judgment, the comprehensive judgment is concerned, then they should not be agitating for specific uh, reforms and touching or demanding for the exit of specific officers unless they have seen the judgment. So it's um, a wait and see game for both teams. Uh, if, for example, the judges will specifically say that there are certain officials uh, who slept on the job and who need to exit, then NASA will be vindicated. But, the, but on the other hand, uh, the Jubilee team will be insisting that um, probably there was choreography in terms of how the judgment was arrived at. A news conference addressed by a majority leader in the Senate, uh, Kipchumba Murkomen, on Friday uh, past week, uh, he was arguing that um, what the judges gave was like an answer, and so they are going back uh, in time to validate the answer. And so there's uh, a lot of push and uh, shove in, in so far as the, the judgment is concerned, but uh, in about uh, an hour or so, we should be able to hear from the judges specifically how they arrived at the judgment and the reasons are the uh, well-founded reasons as to how they made the decision that they made on the 1st of September uh, in validating President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election. Um, Gashuri, it, it, it is quite clear, even from what you've said, you know, what uh, the gains, the ball really um, has largely played in NASA's favor. And so even going into today's um, judgment, either way, they already have an outcome that works for them. But for, let's talk about Jubilee specifically, who are the ones who are caught in the crosshairs in this matter. Should perhaps the court fail to name specific officers who were to uh, then supposedly get some sort of criminal legal action against them. Does that solidify their case um, that uh, the court has um, in some way favored the opposition? Of course, you'll remember, uh, Gashuri, that there are already two petitions before JSC arguing that some of the judges who had this case um, did not act um, within the strict confines of the law even during the hearing of the case. And even if such a situation was to occur, what can Jubilee do with it? At the end of the day, um, you know, the final arbiter in such matters is the courts. Courts whom they are already beginning to argue uh, seem to be favoring the opposition. What maneuvers can they make? Will their play strictly have to be political? All right, it appears Gashuri did not hear me. Let's uh, just hold that thought with him and I'll come to my panel um, with the same question. Francis, we'll catch up with you soon as our line is clear. In studio joining me to the far right is Kibe Mungai, uh, who is an advocate, uh, as is Steve Ogola in the middle, and right next to me, Mark Bichachi, a communication strategist. So Kibe, right off the bat, let me start with a question that I posed to Gashuri. Here, the stakes for NASA are very clear. They have political capital and legal capital, and they'll be looking to spend that either way. But Jubilee is a party really um, that is caught in the crosshairs because uh, either way, regardless of what we hear from the courts, they have already taken the position that this appears to be a bench that is biased against them. And yet at the end of the day, when it comes to the rule of law, this is the apex court. So where else can they maneuver other than politically after today's um, full judgment? I think uh, in many ways, uh is a done deal f as far as Jubilee is concerned. The main orders were given on 1st of September. That is, there is going to be a repeat fresh presidential election, and they have been preparing for that. And I don't think that their worst nightmare is really what we is going to be said today. Everybody has an idea what they will say. Of course, the surprising thing that can come from today's judgment is uh, if the Supreme Court tries to incriminate that is a majority specific officers when the NASA petition in my view had not sought for findings of uh, against any of those people for purposes of having engaged in any irregularities for purposes of election offenses so if that were to happen that would be surprising to me and it would surprise everybody and obviously to embolden the NASA's position for this root and branch reform that they need to effect at IBC. And you see these root and branch reforms, bearing in mind the date of 17th, now we are doing about 27 or 26 days. Uh, if it holds, then it, it effectively means that you would have disabled IBC. 
because it is not every day that you will be able to get a person ready made eh, to work at IBC to understand the system and deliver you a credible elections and but talking, it is important that just, there are just some hold people. that thought hold that thought because you're saying something weighty and i want to get it yes. um, you're talking about um it being surprising for the details judgment to go to the extent of of placing some criminal liability specifically at the steps of particular officers at IEBC um, and yet what the court already arrived at is that there were some illegalities so how would that be um, perhaps a step further than what uh, we should expect because we then intend to really hear what happened illegally and that in itself then would lead to some sort of criminal action you see even in the case of Wetangula versus Combo it is the final decision of uh, the Supreme Court on the issue of uh, where actually Wetangula, maybe Honorable Wetangula, was being accused of having committed uh, electoral offences, the Supreme Court actually said that uh, they and ruled that even where a court makes a finding and uh, against a specific person, that uh, they have hold you culpable for having committed an election offence, the laws of Kenya and because of also Article 50 of the Constitution requires that if it is forgery, since an election court is not a criminal court, you will be taken to a criminal court for the offence of forgery. So that this means effectively that a determinations of uh, the, an election court like the Supreme Court, that there is a cause to believe that somebody has committed an offence, a report is actually supposed to be prepared to be taken to the DPP. And that is why when you had the DPP saying he's waiting for that report, that's the way it is dealt with. Even when you go to that court, it doesn't mean that you'll be convicted. So that as a legal issue, mm -hmm. purely speaking as a legal issue, mm -hmm. the two important ones is none of those officials when I read the petition of uh, Raila appeared to have been incriminated that you had committed any offense. Number two, I would uh, be surprised if the Supreme Court now were to go on and now link what now Chebukati immediately thereafter and NASA have been saying to link any of these people with any wrongdoing when initially no incriminating charges had been made against them. Therefore I am just expecting, just like the initial determination of the court mm -hmm. had actually ruled that there were irregularities, but in that brief determination that was being made, mm -hmm. no person was incriminated. So even today I do not expect any incrimination because if there would be any incrimination it would mean that as these arguments were with uh, and uh, the issues with the Fula Chebukatis were going on mm -hmm. the Supreme Court were listening and they were also trying to pad whatever reasoning they had with what was happening out there right. that would be legitimate okay. so I don't expect anybody to be incriminated today at least because you have to the judgment must reflect what was in court at that time who was accused of what and you go after those people. All right, um, and, and I'll return to my panel shortly, but Gashuri, as we just uh, wind up with you, um, this is a court, uh, while delivering its uh, full uh, judgment, its full written judgment, is appearing to be on trial in the court of public opinion, at least, on the basis of uh, two petitions um, that have uh, been brought before JSC for consideration of some kind of alleged wrongdoing with um, at least two judges who have sat um, at this uh, Supreme Court uh, hearing. What can you tell us about uh, any progress uh, from JSC in terms of substantially sitting down and dealing with these petitions? And also, of course, we've heard even reports of a third petition uh, possibly coming before JSC today. What do you know? Uh, and yesterday, the Judicial Service Commission met and uh, while they did not specifically, uh, when addressing the media, talk about the uh, issue of the petitions that had been filed, uh, touching on uh, the British Chief Justice uh, Philomena Mulu as well as uh, Judge uh, Isaac Lenaola, that was part of their agenda when they met yesterday. And uh, they have even, uh, through the, uh, the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary, Anna Madi, acknowledged receipt of the two petitions uh, from Derek Ngumu uh, from Mombasa County. And um, talking to one of the JSC commissioners, uh, he was telling me that uh, while they want to deal with the petitions, 
expeditiously but they are also cautious that they also don't delve into them as uh, so quickly or in a rush uh, in a way that uh, would affect the operations of the Supreme Court. Remember the presidential election uh, matter is not done and dusted yet until uh, uh, the victor is uh, uh, declared and sworn in and so they would be uh, they, they, they're, they're trying to play um, a cautious game in terms of um, uh, dealing with the petition on one hand but at the same time ensuring that uh, they still a Supreme Court that can hear and determine the presidential election matter should another dispute uh, be uh, filed here at the Supreme Court. And so if you're to touch on those two judges uh, and uh, this, this is the Judicial Service Commission uh, proceeds and finds that uh, there's some grounds uh, or there's some evidence linking uh, to any wrongdoing by the two judges, then they recommend to the, to the president to establish a tribunal to investigate, the, to investigate the judges. Then they will have to be suspended and exit uh, the Supreme Court until they are cleared. So that would leave uh, the uh, Supreme Court with only five judges. And um, that's a bit tricky, bearing in mind that one of the judges was indisposed, you remember, during the, uh, the, the petition hearing. And so should anything happen to one of the judges, if they were to remain five, then uh, you'd uh, be thrown into uh, a quagmire because the quorum is five. And so the uh, Judicial Service Commission are, are saying they want, to be, they want to treat the two petitions very cautiously, even as they deal uh, with the matters that have been raised insofar as the conduct uh, of the two judges is concerned. And... Uh, I don't expect that they are going to, the judges are going to touch on the, uh, on the, on the two petitions that today or in any way. But um, we wait to hear especially how they will be, uh, I mean, outlining the reasons for their, uh, for their judgment, based, uh, bearing in mind that some of the allegations that were made by the petitioner are that um, the judgment that they are going to render today was arrived at fraudulently uh, and as a result of uh, um, uh, unfair contact between the uh, petitioner and the allies of the petitioner and the two judges. So we wait to see how they are going to deal with it. And also the question of uh, body language and demeanor by the six judges. Remember uh, when two of the judges are mentioned adversely and uh, uh, serious allegations raised against them, uh, you'd want to uh, see their demeanor and their body language even as they render that judgment that the petitioner claims uh, was procured fraudulently. Thanks, Francis. So we're going to let you go uh, for now, and we'll catch up with Francis Gashuri at the precincts of the Supreme Court very shortly. But let's just take you across the country now and see reaction. Obviously, um, the entire republic is uh, waiting to hear from the judges this morning. We'll get reaction for you um, from Laura Tieno, who is standing by for us in Kisumu. Uh, good morning, Laura. What is the anticipation of uh, city residents this morning ahead of this uh, full judgment of the Supreme Court? Yes, a very good morning to you and back at the communication center and here in Kisumu County, which is actually perceived as one of Raila Odinga's bedrock, is, uh, the, the, the full ruling is very highly anticipated as of yesterday evening. That was the conversation that most people are having along the street, in the offices and most, uh, most places where we were going to. And maybe if I could just sample some of the opinions, as you know, and there's the whole issue circulating uh, around that CJ Maraga having yesterday saying that uh, nobody should interfere with the independence of the judiciary. So maybe if you could just sample the opinion straight from the host's mouth. A very good morning, sir. Unatarajia nini kuhusiana na full judgment yenye natolewa leo? Unatarajia nini? Yes, kwa majina mimi ni William Mundi from Kisumu. Niache kushika. Oh. Kenya natarajia matokeo ya leo kuhusu Supreme Court. Mimi nataka IBC iende. Hiyo nyumba isafishwe iwe safi kama tunaenda uchaguzi tuende uchaguzi na bodi nyingine lakini si hao wakina Chiloba walichochea uchaguzi tunataka hiyo nyumba isafishwe iwe clean kabisa ndio tuende uchaguzi jusisi kama wa Kenya tulijua ni kwa nini tulienda kupiga kura tuliambiwa hiyo kura ni haki yetu lakini ukishapiga kura mtu wako pale anakunyang'anya haki yako ambapo si haki kwa sisi kama ya wa Kenya which means IBC wanataka kutupatia vita sisi kama wa Kenya ndio wanatugo sababu wanatugonganisha akili na kura tulipiga iende free and fair credible ili kila mkenya apate haki yake kulingana hiyo ku kulingana hiyo kura ambapo kama bado tutakuwa na hiyo body hata tukienda uchaguzi hatuna haki na hiyo body hiyo kura bado wanaenda kurig kwa hivyo 
Aya asante. Maybe mwingine akuja niambie walisema kwamba wameanal win ya Uhuru Kenyatta na wakasema watapeana judgment within 21 days. Leo ndio siku wanatoa. Unatarajia what specific issues za soa ongelele? Okay, first and foremost, my name is Sir Alfonso Nyango Kot. First and foremost, first and foremost, my name is Sir Alfonso Nyango Kot. My Kenya natarajia leo first of all for the complete overhaul of the electoral system so that in the next elections there shall not be anything that shall interfere with our electoral system secondly i want the people involved in the malpractice in the election malpractice to face the full force of the law so that nobody shall have the heart to do such thing again that's my Wafula Chebukati jena alitoa internal memo ya kususpend three ICT officers. Nani kati yenu haswa anakubaliana na ayo maoni ama maoni yake ni gani kuhusiana na iyo, iyo memo? Eh, kwa majina naitua George Udiambo from Kisumu. Tunaweza sema kulingana chenye che, kwa wafula Chebukati wanafanya, hajafanya kwa kiwango inapo, inapofa. Kos, Esra Cheloba anafanya na igrupi yake yote. Sia chenatua watu wawili, watatu wanaba, wanabaki. Ya pili tunataka tujue mbona NASA wakipanga rali yao wanapigiwa na kiagas na wale jubili walifaa manguo official wakionekana pale wakitaka kufunja geti ya Supreme Court hata tiaga sata moja hakuna kwa nini asante asante yes, yes kwa majina naitwa Charles Odwor sisi hapa kama watu wa Kisumu tunatarajia ya kwamba tunajua IBC official all of them they will go home because we want this election to be free and fair and credu election sasa hapa kitu tunasema hapa kisumu tunataka hapa hiyo uchaguzi yenye inakuja ifanye na njia ya haki na ukweli ndio kila mkenya ajue kura yake inaenda njia gani asanteni Yes, and those are some of the opinions we could sample here in Kisumu County. And as you know, as Rachiloba, uh, 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 not as Rachiloba, sorry, uh, the Wafula Chebukati rather, had said that they are awaiting the full judgment of the Supreme Court, basically to see what the way forward is concerning how they're going to plan the elections. And right now, of course, of course, we'll also be expecting the outcome of the meeting. We know that IBC is supposed to meet the stakeholders, that is Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta. So it's a wait and see game, basically, to see what will go down in that meeting and also what the full judgment will be as of today and thanks very much uh, for that Laura and, and of course uh, the pointer that you've made and as far as that meeting uh, we wait to see if it will take off at all we do know that Jubilee had uh, requested that it be postponed given the uh, events of the day and uh, Raila Odinga had made it clear that he was not going to attend unless uh, his demands uh, had been met so um, it is doubtful that that meeting will take place but uh, nonetheless our eyes will be peeled at the bombers of Kenya um, let's take you now to our John Wanyama his life for us in Eldoret, equally with reaction from area residents. Uh, good morning, John. What can you tell us about um, the mood of area residents? Uh, we saw this as one of the um, locations for protests from Jubilee supporters yesterday. Is all calm in uh, Eldoret this morning? And what are the expectations of residents ahead of this uh, full judgment? A very good morning to you, uh, Anne, and here in Eldoret Town, West in Geshu County, as you saw yesterday, residents took to streets to demonstrate uh, against Chief Justice Maraga, saying that uh, whatever he did, he robbed them of their, wi uh, their victory, and they are not happy with what he ruled last time. Today, they are, we are also expecting them maybe the, any time from now, they will be also going to street as we've had to demonstrate and insist in solidarity with the President Uhuru Kenyatta that whatever you did as a Chief Justice or as a Supreme Court is not right. And, uh, uh, and maybe something that residents here are really raising is that they are tired of this uh, politic, politics each and every day. They want to go to this ballot to vote once and for all. They are not, uh, they are, they are not here to waste their time just yes, for two people especially that today this one says this tomorrow this one says that and that they want also IBC to stay put that there's no one who should live from IBC as a commission and let's talk to one of or two of them to get their views maybe maoni yako ni hatu kuhusiana na leo kwamba tunangojea kuona koti kituwa wa musu wake kikamenifu nataka niseme hivi maraka 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 tare nane sisi wananchi tulienda kwa ballot paper na tukafoto tukachakuwa president ya Kenya wewe maraka ukakuja uka, uka rule ukasema kura ilipiwa 
tukasema waja watoto wafanye mtihani wewe unataka songesha maraka 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 wewe tarehe chana tulisikia wewe ukisema twende barabarana kwani umeona sisi wakaaji ama sisi citizens ya Kenya hii kwamba wewe ndio unataka sungusha sisi kwenda barabarana makuna kazi ya kufanya umeona sisi ni watu wa idolas ambaye wana, wanaambiwa tu waende kwa barabara maraka tafadhali kama unataka kuwa president kucha kwa kwa debe tukupigie debe uone kama vile utaenda nyumbani nataka ni mwambie president sisi kama wakaaje wa wasingisho atuende tena kupika kura kwa sababu wewe ndio president ya Kenya mambo ya kura ondoa hiyo watoto wafanya mitiani sisi tuende kasi yetu Aya, mimi kama mkaji wa hapa Eldoret mimi sikubaliani kabisa na mambo ya maraga kwanza kwa uamuzi yenye amekuwa akifanya kwa koti e, maraga ajekuwa akifanya kitu yenye inaridisha watu kama ile ruling yenye alifanya kwanza kuna jamaa aliwao hapa Eldoret aliweza kufunga mtu mwenye ameua watu wawili miaka kumi Alafu sasa hizi vile tunaongea maraga si mtu mwenye tunaweza tegemee kwa mambo yenye anasema kwanza jana nimeshaangaa charge muzima anakimbia kwa press na maasira anakuja kuongea aki, mpaka ana, anasema mkitaka kunitoa munitoe kwa referendum kwa hivi hata ile ruling yenye anaenda kufanya leo mimi si, najua ataegemea mahali sisi tulipiga kura na wakati tulipiga kura kama maraga angekuwa mtu mwenye anaongea ukweli angeenda kwa ballot box zenye tulipiga wahesabu hizo kura kwa hivyo si mimi binafsi mimi nasema maraga hata ile yenye anaenda kuamua leo mi najua ataegemea pande moja juzi kuna uh, 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 kuna utetezi yenye watu wali, walikuwa nasema ati uh, mwili na nani walikuwa wanaongea kwa ile asira na lenaola kwa ile asira yeye mwenyewe all right, so we're just sampling for you uh, a bit of the views from across the country and we'll return to John a little later. Uh, our eyes are peeled there at Eldred. Of course, you've heard him report that uh, we can anticipate um, protests uh, from Eldred this morning once again um, and we'll see whether that actually materializes. But let's take you to Nyeri now. Uh, Martin Munene is standing by and, of course, um, another area where we saw uh, demonstrations, uh, basically, if you like, in Jubilee strongholds over the conduct of the court. Uh, good morning, Martin. Uh, what is the mood like in Nyeri this morning as we anticipate uh, that full uh, written judgment of the court? <laughs> Martin, if you can hear me, what can you tell us from uh, Nyeri? Well, thank you very much, Anki Guta, and a very good morning to you. And a uh, very chilly morning in Nyeri County. And uh, I must say that uh, yesterday there were protests uh, around this area, uh, people expressing displeasure with the Supreme Court and what is going on. And uh, ahead of the Supreme Court, a uh, full judgment being released today, uh, residents are feeling that uh, the Supreme Court has not been just, especially to them, uh, this being a Mount Kenya region. And uh, we have a few people just to give us a sample of what they expect from the judgment uh, today. Uh, maybe very briefly, uh, Kiharan Jao, kindly if you can join me and look at the camera. Uh, so what are some of the expectations that you're having as a Nyeri resident uh, in regard to the Supreme Court judgment today? Uh, well, uh, this morning I expect the Supreme Court to tell us that we are holding fresh polls within the 60 days. And uh, if anything else, I would expect the Chief Justice to tell us uh, following the new allegations to tell us that uh, uh, the day we will swear in our president Uhuru Kenyatta because we had and we read that some judges were going were meeting at night and in car parks with the uh, NASA legal counsel. All right, uh, that is uh, some uh, of the feeling, uh, some of the, the, of the views that uh, people have here, feeling that uh, the, the, the Chief Justice has not been fair to them. Of course, these are allegations and are the opinions of the public. Uh, and maybe we can just get uh, one more person to kindly just tell us uh, what they feel just to, to, to get a clearer view. So what are some of the expectations that you have? Uh, today we expect that uh, Chief Justice Maraga to rule, uh, to give us the... the, 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 the the way forward, what to, to expect as a country, because uh, right now here in Nyeri County, we are not doing any job because we are we have a lot of tension. We don't know what to do, and we we are very sure that the day of election is 17 and not more. 
All right, that is what is happening here. There's a lot of tension, really. A lot of businesses are kind of closed, and there's no much activity as usual. Uh, so we, we, we just hope that uh, following the ruling or the judgment today, peace is going to be maintained, and we're not maybe going to see protests as we saw yesterday. And uh, so we're going to be, you know, keeping you up to date and up to speed with what is happening in Nyeri County. Uh, back to you in studio, and Kibuta. I am Martin Munene. Uh, thanks for that report, Martin. So uh, a, a tense environment there in Yeri. Some businesses closed ahead of this full judgment that is expected in about uh, 13 or so minutes. As you can see, um, the court... Um, almost in session we've seen uh, quite a few officers going back and forth uh, at the you know the main um, uh, what, what could I call it the, the, the desk if you like uh, where the court sits I have lawyers in studio so they're going to tell me what exactly that side of the bench is referred to as but uh, nonetheless we're waiting to see um, this court pronounce itself conclusively on a matter that has certainly been divisive that has even put um, the court's uh, reputation um, in jeopardy with some two petitions now before the JSC. And um, let me introduce uh, my full panel to you. Uh, joining us also this hour is uh, Isaac Okero, who is the LSK president. We also have, um, of course, um, you've heard from Kibe Mungai, who's a lawyer, Steve uh, uh, Ogola, equally a lawyer, and a communication strategist, Mark Bichachi. And good morning to you all, and thank you for speaking to us. Um, still, let me come to you now. What can we expect from the court this morning? You have heard um, from uh, residents across the country. You've heard from uh, Francis Kashuri earlier that there is the anticipation that we'll hear very definitively who did what that resulted in the nullification of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's election. And Kibe Mungai has argued uh, on this panel that that would be um, surprising given that uh, it was not even part of the prayers that were, was brought by the petitioner in this matter. What are your expectations? I think um, if, you look, if, you, if you listen to the Chief Justice preambula quote, the elections, election is a process, not, a, not, not an event, uh, then you can, you can expect the judgment to outline the process and the manner of falsification that happened, but then uh, you can expect that other actors will then, like the ODPP, will then investigate uh, who, who is responsible for that particular segment of the electoral management. So the courts, yes, they will not, uh, they will not name people, uh, persons uh, to, be, to be investigated, but as they indict the process, because we expect the judgment to indict the process, it is then uh, open to the ODP to investigate criminal aspects of that, of, of that process. But one, one thing that is also going unattended is that because of the amount of the framing of the Supreme Court determination, the relation is a process and the management ultimately ends up with the, the IDC commissioners. It's possible that someone could initiate proceedings to test their suitability to continue being in office as commissioners that will not find its way in the judgment, but following an analysis, it's possible that someone could move to court challenging the, the, the suitability of the commissioners to continue serving in those commissions. That is something that may be explored after the election. But otherwise, for today, just like it, it happens every day, usually the judges, they, at the beginning, they're just analyzing the cases presented by the petitioner. They analyze the responses given by the respondents. And then they give their own analysis of how they understand the issues. And then they give a determination, which is what they really gave. If, if no petitioner or no respondent cited one of the, uh, named anybody, we can't expect in the logical flow of things that the court will then emerge from someone and then name persons. But the decision will, pro will open pathways for further investigation and inquiry. Okay. Isaac, I'll first uh, start by schooling me in Law 101, where judges sit. What is that called? Oh, that is the bench. It's called the bench? We are at the bar, yes. You're the bar and that's the bench. Thank yes. you so much. Yes. Okay, so once the, the bench emerges uh, this morning, um, you've heard the, the two arguments. Would it be <coughs> highly irregular to hear that, you know, this... I mean, ov obviously, we already know the roles and the designations of certain IBC officers, so that's not something that per se needs to yield, you know, give, lend itself to significant investigation. Those titles and JDs are already out there. Mm -hmm. So as they reach their conclusions on the irregularities and any um, illegalities that were committed, are we not, would it be highly surprising, irregular, strange to hear names named? Um, I don't think so. Um you know, the, the indictment of the process was made on the 1st of September when the judges found that there were irregularities and, and illegalities. So what we are hearing today, what Kenyans are waiting for today, is to hear the uh, details of what these irregularities and illegalities are. 
the extent to which um, they will delve into those details remains to be seen. Uh, they have had copious amounts of documentation to, to troll through. Um, we will only know once when, when uh, the judgment is rendered. Okay. Um, having said that, though, th this is, uh, Mark, a matter that, whilst legal in nature, obviously touches on a political process, and political actors are looking very keenly to the details of what we'll hear today, including those names that may or may not be mentioned, in order to spend this capital um, in the uh, electioneering period, of which um, we can only assume the conclusion will be October 17th, having not heard anything different from IEBC. Um, what are the stakes uh, for both sides as they await the full judgment today? You know, one of the things that I opined here before is I said that the judges will be very careful not to be seen to have occasioned a judicial coup. Now, that means that the pressure is on them to justify to the Kenyan public that the decision they made was founded on very firm law, very firm evidence, and that the election was irretrievably flawed. So that is going to be what is going to be the PR value coming out of that. Now, whatever they say, NASA will use it to say, aha, you see, we won the election, and this is the process by which the election was stolen from us. You believe and this is the person we want out of office exactly. because of it. That okay. They must do that. It is the only strategy they have. Jubilee's strategy has become rather clear uh, of late. Number one is to water down uh, what is going to be the ruling in the sense that they are going to take advantage of the fact that the judges did say that um, the third respondent who was Uhuru Migai Kenyatta was not guilty of any offense. That is one. Two, they'll try and push the, the, the narrative that they want the courts to declare the debates open open the ballot boxes. What does that mean? Jubilee is going back to that narrative that despite the fact that there may have been errors at the IEBC, those errors did not mean that we did not win the presidency. What does that do? That wins them sympathy among their people. It means that we queued and voted for this guy and a judge has taken it from us. Just the same way on the NASA side mm -hmm. that we queued and voted to, to, for this guy and IEBC and took it from IBC us. IEBC Karani took it. Yes. Right. So this is going to be a huge, huge PR uh, battle, and it's going to be a lot of political capital, incidentally, for both sides. What is going to be interesting, though, is judges have never been in a position where they've had to fight a political war and a PR war in the history of this nation. How Maraga presents himself, himself how he looks today, his tone, <coughs> the kind of pitch he takes to speak, will tell a lot. Because Kenyans will not just be looking to hear the hearing. They'll try and see, is he angry? Is he happy? And does that mean he's pro-NASA or he's independent? That's what is going to happen today. Right. But uh, just, we're going to break very shortly. But uh, just before we get there, Kibe, um, we've heard this a lot um, from Jubilee support you know, open the boxes. We want a, a recount uh, strictly as a matter of law. Now that an election, a fresh election has already been ordered, is there any way that Jubilee can maneuver itself legally to find itself in a position where these boxes are actually open? What is the value of such an argument? Is it, in your opinion, purely political and of no legal consequence? My answer is this. Eh? In the judgment, the determination that came, eh, the majority incriminated the transmission system and therefore said the election was not conducted in accordance with Article 86. What this means is that uh, the part of Article 86 that concerned the voters that people queued and they voted, that was not incriminated. And therefore today when we go, there is an element of disappointment that is going to be there. Because for the Jubilee lawyers, for example, Abenasil, when he was commenting on what they have said, he would be expecting that the, that the judges will try to justify why, how this loss, uh, big win of Uhuru, was somehow mm -hmm. uh, made to disappear because of these irregularities. But the question the judges sought out to answer would be relating to transmission. And therefore, to go now back to your question, mm -hmm. what is the value of that? Obviously, there would be, from a political point of view, let us start there first. From a political point of view, if you, the, you say there was nothing wrong with the counting, and there was nothing wrong with how people voted, and there is not a single constituency, for example, 
the trailer of Odinga said Uhuru was declared the winner when he had actually lost, mm -hmm. then the Jubilee will say, well, we won the election, and what uh, has been found to have failed is that the judges have decided to try the computers. So IBC computers failed. This does not mean that there was no mandate given. A mandate was given. Is that important legally? Legally, it is of no value for the time being, because an election is supposed to take place within 60 days. But if the, the Jubilee are understanding the strategy of NASA to be that there will be no election on the, as ordered by the court within 60 days, this is where the legal consequences of that will come into play. Okay, so and now the argument can be made. Well, the votes are there. <coughs> Since nobody said that there was anything wrong with those votes, uh, votes and how they were counted, mm -hmm. then, and you have heard it from Eldoret, then a president can be declared using those votes. Um, and, and, and so what, which court would they then go to, to order such boxes to be opened? Very good would they question. go to the high court? Would they go back to the Supreme Court? You don't need to go anywhere. Remember, Who's gonna the area... The yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm answering that question. <laughs> okay. It is important Kenyans to hear this. Okay. Remember, if after 60 days there is no elections, we enter into that uncharted territory that we call a constitutional crisis. When you enter a constitutional crisis, it means what happens uh, after 60 days mm -hmm. is no longer the, since the constitution does not tell us what to do, then it is a political cut fight. Now, during this political cut fight, and depending on who has, as it were, politics is about two things. It's about the numbers in parliament, number one, and it is about ultimately, because then that is why when you talk about revolutions, who controls the army, unfortunately? And therefore, at that particular period, if this is now the value of called... this particular issue politically. Now you would be able, and that's why you are hearing this argument. We, wa we don't even now also want an election. That's what some people are saying from Jubilee. We want on the basis of the ballots that were cast and declarations to be made. So that if you do not today impeach the vote count that was granted, mm -hmm. and we don't do an election within 60 days, that would be extremely dangerous for Kenya because that vote count will come to come to uh, Unfortunately, I, I can see the whole panel <laughs> just, you know, with a word on their tongue and about to, to give me a response. But we have to go to break. As you can see, um, court shortly will be in session. We were expecting uh, this uh, full judgment to kick off at uh, 10 a.m., which is in the next uh, 60 seconds. Um, that hasn't happened yet. We're taking a break and we're back uh, with live coverage of this full judgment from the Supreme Court after this.